Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This is a short topic uh, from the chapter Genetics. Looking at the illustrations, I am sure by now you would have guessed the topic, right? Yes, this is the Barr body or Davidson body. So in the next 10 or 12 minutes, I'll be talking about what is Barr body, what is the mechanism of its occurrence, what are the morphological features and what are the indications for testing for these bar bodies and how do we actually do what are the procedure for demonstration of these bar bodies and finally we will look at the differences between the bar body and the davidson body now what is this bar body bar body is the small darkly stained structure in the nucleus so this is the darkly stained structure which you see in the nucleus this is called the bar body so majority of the cases this bar body lies in the periphery of the nucleus and sometimes it can also be seen in other parts, you know, it can be seen uh, in the proximity to nucleolus. It is also referred to as X chromatin or sex chromatin. So basically this bar body is a deactivated or inactive X chromosome. Okay. This darkly stained structure is named after Dr. Barr who uh, was a Canadian physician who along with his student Dr. Bartram way back in 1948 identified this structure okay so that's bar body for you now we need to understand as to why there is inactivation of the x chromosome to understand the concept of why there is inactivation let us see what is this lyon's hypothesis this hypothesis is proposed by dr lyon who was a british geneticist so according to this hypothesis it says in female mammals one of the two x chromosomes in the somatic cell is inactive Okay, and this inactivation of X chromosome, X chromosome is random. Either of the X chromosomes, you know, can be inactivated. And the inactivation occurs during the development. Now, what we need to understand is that this inactive X chromosome remains inactivated in all the subsequent generations of this cell. This is Lyon's hypothesis. Now, why there is inactivation of X chromosome? Let us understand. So, basically, this is to ensure females, like males, you know, they should have one functional copy of the X chromosome in each somatic cell, in each body cell. That is to equalize the dosage of gene products from the X chromosome between XX females and X females. So basically this X chromosome, you know, this X chromosome is inactivated or disabled to avoid unwanted information from being passed down to future generations. Now that we know why there is X inactivation, let us understand how is this X chromosome inactivated. This is by a process called transcriptional silencing. Okay, So let us understand that X chromosome have a center called X inactivation center, which is XIC. They have genes, they have two sets of genes. One of the gene is X inactive specific transcript XIST. Other set of genes are TSIX, this is XIST reversed. Okay, this is the gene which is responsible for inactivation of X chromosome. So this inactivation is referred to as lionization. Whereas this particular gene TSIX is the one which prevents inactivation. Now we know that in a given nucleus there are active chromosomes and inactive chromosomes, right? So this active chromosome normally is enclosed within euchromatin and this euchromatin is loosely packed chromatin and this is the chromatin, this participate in the transcriptional activity, okay? The chromosome within the euchromatin is the one which participates in the transcriptional activity whereas the inactive X chromosome is silenced by being packaged into a transcriptionally inactive structure which is referred to as heterochromatin and this heterochromatin is a tightly packed chromatin and we need to know that this has no or little transcriptional activity so this is a heterochromatin tightly packed inactive x chromosome so that is bar body now what are the number of bar bodies in a given nucleus so the number of bar bodies at interface nucleus is nx minus 1 Okay, so it is one less than the number of chromosomes. So the total number of bar bodies is one less than the total number of chromosomes. For example, in a normal male who has XY genotype, right? So the number of bar bodies are one minus one, that is no bar bodies. In Klinefelter syndrome, you have two X chromosomes. So the number of bodies, bar bodies are two minus one, two X minus one, right? Two minus one is one. In a normal female, again, because you have two X chromosomes, one being silenced and you have one bar body. In Turner syndrome, where the where there is only one X chromosome, so the number of bar body is none. 
in trisomy X where you have three X chromosomes. So the number of bar bodies three minus one is two, two bar bodies. So remember total number of bar bodies is always one less than the total number of X chromosomes. Now, how is how are these bar bodies demonstrated? They are best demonstrated by any nuclear dyes. Nuclear dyes, when I say that, it could be Papanicolaustein, Chrysyl violet, Theonine, Orsine, Fulgen stain, Carbolfoschin, and even fluorescent staining. Sometimes phase contrast microscopy is also used to study these bar bodies. And remember, phase contrast microscopy, you can see bar bodies even in unstained and in living cells. So why bar body testing is done? What are the indications for testing bar bodies? One, this is a method to identify person's gender and to establish sexual identity in newborns and adults. Though this particular test is not being done you know, routinely, it was a method to identify person's gender. It was earlier used in competitive sports to identify males masquerading as females. Why do they do? Because to gain competitive advantage in these competitions. It, it was used as a screening test for ambiguous genitalia, where you know sexual characters were not clear. Sometimes bar body testing is asked whenever there is a delayed onset of puberty. Bar body testing is also used in forensics in crime scenes, you know, where you can f find the evidence of bar body in buccal epithelial cells in the traces of saliva to find out whether the you know, culprit is a male or a female. So these are the indications of bar body testing. Now, what is the procedure to take a sample? The most common smears which are used to you know, study bar bodies are buccal smears. You, know, you ask the patient to rinse the mouth, clean the mouth and then take a smear from the buccal mucosa either using a wooden uh, spatula or even a cytobrush and then the smear is made on the glass slide. We have to fix using fixative and then stain using those stains which we had discussed earlier okay and observe under microscope. What do you see? You see these sheets of squamous epithelial cells. Right? When you examine these squamous epithelial cells under high power, you can make out that you can identify the presence of bar body as a darkly stained structure in the periphery of the nucleus. Okay, Remember, these bar bodies are seen in 30 to 60 percent of the female somatic cells. Now, what are all the other tissue where which from which bar bodies can be studied? They can be studied from corneal epithelium, they can be studied from the vaginal mucosa and even fibroblasts. It can also be studied in you know peripheral smear in polymorphonuclear leukocytes, particularly the neutrophils. Right? So you prepare a smear in the peripheral smear, these bar bodies are seen in variable forms. One such form is called drumstick appearance. So this is a drumstick. This is a small deeply stained nuclear mass of around 1.5 microns in diameter attached to the nucleus by means of a very thin stalk. Remember, it is seen in around 1 to 17 percent of neutrophils with an average of around 2.9 percent. So this drumstick, you know, this was first identified by Professor William Mackay Davidson way back in 1950s. He was a Scottish pathologist and hematologist and that's the reason why this is also referred to as Davidson body. Okay. So remember, bar body you saw in buccal smears whereas Davidson body you saw in, you see in peripheral smear. There are other forms of bar bodies in the peripheral smear which can be in the form of racket, can, can be seen in the form of sessile nodules, small clubs and minor lobes. But all said and done, it is a drumstick which is, which is a drumstick appearance which is most commonly seen and studied. So let us conclude this talk by uh, understanding the differences between the bar body and the Davidson body. Bar bodies, as you all know, it's found in somatic cells in females, whereas Davidson body is found in polymorphonuclear leukocytes in females, that is neutrophils in females. They are seen in buccal smear, they are seen in peripheral smear and these are the bar body. This is a bar body in a squamous epithelial cell and this is a bar body in a neutrophil which is a polymorphonuclear leukocytes. So that completes this small topic of bar body. We did discuss about the definition, the mechanism, the morphological features, indications for testing. And finally, we did realize, we did understand the differences between the bar body and Davidson body. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any questions to ask. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll be coming out with many more such short uh, videos. And do share if you find this video helpful. Thank you.